Hey guys, welcome to the third episode of Auditor of Firmacraft. So between the episodes, I've been chopping a little bit of wood, got it all stored up here, and the charcoal pit is also ready. So we can dig this up and get a bit of charcoal. Let's see. Yeah, that's at least enough to get started. So you also use the shovel on this to mine it. There we go. That's 25 charcoal. Okay, um, I'm gonna store this somewhere. We can't use it yet because I need a little bit of stone to actually make the charcoal forge. It just turned nighttime. I think it's the perfect opportunity to go mining. So really close to base, just 150 meters away, I found a couple of those copper rocks on the ground. Um, we're gonna try to find some copper ore below. If you use the prospector pick, it already tells us we have a very large sample of native copper here. Okay, so that's really good. Now we actually want to find the perfect spot to dig down to. So what you usually do is you place down a torch or something else, and then you go in one direction until it doesn't say anymore that you find a very large sample of native copper. So this would be here, and you place down a torch, and you go to the other direction and do the same. Sometimes it says found nothing, and it's just um, yeah, the prospector pick can give you false negative. I think there's even if you do F3 and H, yeah, the top it says the copper prospector pick has an accuracy of 76%. So like every fourth time, it will tell me that I found nothing, but there's actually some copper below. Later, if we can upgrade our tools, the accuracy will be better. Remember, the iron prospector pick had an accuracy of around 88%. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing this. Okay, here also switch to very large, right around here. And you just find the center point you know, between those two torches. So you just count the blocks. It's like 21 blocks apart. And then you just go to the middle. This could be actually really close to the first torch. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, so I want to go over here, and then I can do the same in the other direction. Then we should pretty much have the the best yeah, center point to dig down to. Okay, I think here very large should be the last one. And then we do the same over here. Large sample. Okay, so it could already be the last one here. Yeah, there's a torch already seems to be like perfectly in the center. Okay, then we just get our shovel. And I definitely like to dig two blocks next to each other because there are caves below. There is a lava source below you could fall into. So digging like this is really the best way. Okay, and there's already the first cop board. That didn't take long. Okay. So you can also check it out, we get a normal native copper, there's like three different types, poor, normal and rich. I think it's 15, 25 and 35 millibuckets, so compared to those little rocks you can find, it's a lot more. Okay, I'm gonna dig down a little bit more. And start placing some support blocks. Should have actually dug down... Yeah, three wide because we need three blocks of space for that. Okay, got some support blocks here. Um, one, two, three, four, one lower. Okay. From the block we place the support on, uh, we can uh, support the five blocks above. Okay, and then it's gonna try to mine away those three. So we're quite experienced miner. Uh, hopefully we won't have a lot of cave-ins. So I kind of know how to do it. Here another support, and there we go. So this horizontal support isn't the important one. From that one, we have a nine by five uh, by nine area supported. So even gravel blocks and stuff like that wouldn't fall down as the blocks around this are just not affected by the gravity. So you can yeah, easily mine this stuff now. So that also means that the blocks here below the support, of course, aren't supported. But those are still supported here. And basically the two blocks above. So this one and that one. I think the gravel should fall down though. No, actually not. Gravel doesn't fall down here. 
Okay. You can safely mine those blocks. Yeah, so it's a 9 by 5 by 9. So if you you can go out four blocks from this in each direction, and it's perfectly supported. But look how much copper we're getting from this. So at the beginning, of course, you can collect a lot of those little rocks, but in the long run, you definitely want to go mining. It's just the, the best way in the early game, at least, before we can automate this, actually. So we, we can make renewable copper and iron and all of the other metals in this. With the great mod, of course, but yeah, right now, it's just the best way. Okay, so we're gonna get plenty of copper from this, can make all the tools and do uh, yeah, also the other progression. Okay, so let's see. Um, yeah, I can still mine those. Gonna try to mine up all the copper we find here. We'll need a lot of that later anyway. So I already got a really good amount of copper here. Check it out. Uh, like this stack alone is already 560 millibuckets of copper, so good enough for five tools. You can also see the different qualities of the copper ore. That's poor, rich, and that should be a normal one. Okay, what I also already want to do is I want to yeah, dig up a couple of the raw stone blocks. So the way you do this is to completely mine all the blocks around one of those just normal stone blocks, and then it would drop itself. So usually if you break stone here, it would drop those little rocks that you can also collect above ground, but some crafting recipes will definitely need the raw stone here. Okay, this is, can, can be a little bit tedious because all six sides of the yeah, stone you want to dig up needs to be air. Now that I have dug four blocks in that direction, I gotta be a little bit careful because those blocks here wouldn't be supported and if I mine those, I would risk a cave in. So I'm gonna just be extra careful and just place the next support here. You can also connect those horizontally if you want. Okay, now yeah, I can keep mining here. Also gonna focus on the raw stone a little bit. I forgot that in the beginning. Definitely wanna get at least like 10 or 12 of those. So I dug four blocks more in that direction. Now we can add more vertical supports, but we can already also just um, move those supports here a little bit over to save on, yeah, placing down a lot of uh, vertical supports. So I think the furthest distance between those pillars is one, two, three, four, five. There are five blocks in between. I think this still works. Let's try it. Let's go one block further out. Yeah, they here they wouldn't connect anymore. Okay. We can shift it like this. So an easy way to further expand is also just to place some vertical supports here. So one, two, three, four, five blocks. Then perfect, we can place one here. Yeah, this support supports the area until this pillar again. Then we can just take those out and connect it like this. Okay. Running a bit low actually on supports. But I can definitely connect this here. Here we go. And only got four left there. I would need to take some out of the vessel now. The veins in this game can be huge. So I've been mining for quite a while and there's still no end in sight. Inventory is completely filled up. So what we can do is at least craft those rocks into cobble. That saves some space. And we can also fill the vessels with the copper. So once they stack up to 16, it's definitely worth it to put it into the vessels. That's why if I go mining, I bring a lot of those. I got so much stuff from this ore, time to head out. I need to drink real soon. My pickaxe is about to break and a lot of the vessels are also already filled up. Okay, so we should be able to place down a bit of cobble here because it's supported. And then we can just go up the ladders to get out of here. There's actually the next water. That's something I need to worry about ASAP. If I look on the map, it looks like there's some in the ravine over there. Well, I got ladders. If it's actually a ravine, I can jump in there, I feel like. That's not too bad. Okay. Just gonna throw this out. Okay. I can also fill up my jug. I used up the one I have. Might be a good idea to actually have two emergency jugs yeah, in the vessel. I only use those really if I, if I have an emergency or if I don't have any water available nearby. 
Alright, so we're back home again. I added a couple more chests here to the storage, reorganized it, labeled it to get rid of the chaos. So at least for early game, this is definitely yeah, a good storage solution. So we can check it out. We got uh, charcoal, planks, slumber, mob drops. There's still plenty of space. So this will be fine for a while. You know, empty vessels can go in here. Oh god, actually still copper in a vessel. <laughs> I thought I emptied all of it already. So you got even more of that stuff. Yep. Put it in here as well. More rich copper even. Normal and poor stuff. Oh god, if I add up all of this, it's probably like 70 or 80 ingots already. Uh, definitely enough so we can make 70 tools out of this or use it for other things. So we're good on copper. In case we need more, we can always go back to the vein. But for now, there's definitely plenty. All right, so one of the little things I want to do, it's actually huge, <laughs> is to turn the jute into jute fiber because out of that we can make a lead which is of course super useful to uh, transport animals so one of the next things i want to do probably in this episode I actually go out exploring again and maybe try to find llamas or horses would be really good um so we can get around quicker with the horse and also don't use up as much food traveling so that would be huge if we could find one but for now, I think we can actually continue with the charcoal to make a charcoal pit. So in order to do that, you need five stone blocks. I'm pretty sure cobble is fine, but just in case, I'm going to take the raw stone as well. Then we take the cobble. So the charcoal yeah, pit or forge is actually yeah, an upgrade to the, the fire pit we had before. I'm just wondering where to place it. I don't think it matters too much. Just need to be careful because it can set things on fire. It needs skylight access. Uh, should we just do it right here in the middle? I mean, we can always move it. It's just placing on a couple blocks. I don't even have a shovel right now. Okay, let's run to the cobble chest real quick. And make one. Um, yeah, digging one block. <laughs> Super worth it. But we need to shovel for stuff anyway. Okay, yeah, I think here's a good spot. Actually, it's five blocks. I need to place down a cobble here or stone. Hope cobble is fine. And here on the sides. There we go. Then you place seven layers of charcoal in there and use your fire starter that I need one more stick for. The last one is gone. There's a stick. Okay. On fire starter. Actually running out of sticks a lot lately. <laughs> so it's time to actually make the scythe, um, which you yeah, can use on the leaves of the trees and get saplings back this way. So far I didn't get any saplings, but already chopped a lot of the trees around. So it would be nice to get some saplings as well. Okay, then you just hold right click and hopefully this works. Cobble is fine. Okay, there we go. This turned into a charcoal forge. So here you can put in more charcoal to keep it burning. And what you can do, we can maybe already do it real quick, is you know, we can take a vessel again, just put it in here on the side, and then we can heat up some of the copper we got. Um, or we take actually that one mold, the chisel head mold immediately. We don't need to do it with the vessel, it's actually way better. And yeah, I need exactly 100 millibuckets again. So we just heat this up and it should pour into the mold. This is getting hot enough. As you can see the indicator, very hot. It melts at orange. Yeah, here on the side we got an indicator. So the charcoal is able to get us to yellow white. But we only need to get to orange to melt copper. For some of the other yeah, metals we can find later. Uh, we actually need to add some bellows on the side to raise the temperature even higher. But for now, yeah, for copper, this is fine. Yeah, we already got it in the mold now, so we can get our chisel. So I'm just gonna run over there, throw it into the water. There we go. We can shift right click it and have a chisel head. If I only had a stick, I could actually assemble it. 
Okay, so I got a chisel now. This can be used for a couple crafting recipes. For example, to turn the raw stone into smooth stone, which isn't affected by gravity, so that would be nice. But also in combination with a hammer, I can make slabs and stairs and also turn raw stone directly into smooth stone just by right clicking it and then I can mine it. So the smooth stone is interesting because it's a stone that isn't affected by gravity. That's why I would want that. But I forgot about the jute fiber again. So let's work on that next. Uh, so in order to get yeah, jute fiber, we need to jute and soak it in water. Here we can also see already the create mode recipe. We can do some bulk washing instead once we got a yeah, fan. It will take a while, but we can also just make a barrel, fill it with water and soak the jute in for eight minutes. Okay, still got some lumber around. Okay, and make a barrel and then you just click it on a water source. So like this, there we go. And the barrel is now filled with 10 buckets of water. Got a drink here anyway. What does it even say? Um, how much water do we need? 200 milli buckets for one dude. So we can make 50 out of it. Got a whole stack and then some. I think I'm just gonna make a second barrel. So we do two at once. Don't think there's even another use for, for just a normal jute. Let's see. Yeah, I can only turn it into the jute fiber. So we definitely wanna convert all of it. Okay, let's make another barrel. There we go. Run over there. And get more water. Oh yeah, it's also a thing. Uh, you can't carry two of those. <laughs> can still yeah, change with the FUV. Can move around a little bit, but usually you only want to carry one of those. Because they're really heavy. It is also here indicator very heavy. Okay. Then let's put... 50 jute in there, it's gonna use up all the water. You gotta unseal it, click it in there and seal it, and then it takes the other eight minutes. The rest can be put in here. Yeah, at some point we want the whole area for barrels because you can later then also, for example, make alcohol by putting some grains in there, which is kind of useful. So a lot of things can be done with this. Okay, then next thing is I'm gonna make the other tools as well. So the hammer, the scythe, and probably also, yeah, although it doesn't last long, at least for now, um, a copper shovel and an axe. And here's our jute fiber. Perfect. You can see it used up all the water. It's actually also getting filled by rain. It's quite interesting. Okay. Now here's more. And now we can craft a lead. Or maybe if we find multiple animals, it might be better to have several. Let's make four maybe. Cost this bit of jute. That should be enough. I think out of the jute fiber, we can also make the sails that are important for the create mod later. Let me look it up real quick. That's for power generation. Yeah, so we can use the burlap cloth to make a sail, and the burlap cloth is basically just um, jute, 12 jute in a loom. Um, but we could get two sails out of it, so that's why. Don't want to waste too much of the jute, it's going to be important later. And what's actually the time of the year? February. I think it's still late winter. Has a snow here, so that's actually super nice. Temperatures actually went down to 0 0.6 at some point, I saw that. I think, yeah, next month we can maybe also make some farmland and start placing the saplings. I was thinking about uh, digging away a couple blocks here in the back to even the terrain out. So there should be, yeah, here, maybe here in the back, there should be plenty of space and for farmland. All right, so what I actually wanna try next is to see if we can even fire the, yeah, the pottery in the charcoal forge. I'm not sure about this anymore, but this would be of course super helpful. So we need to make the fire pit every time. Definitely want uh, another jug. And let's also put in tool molds already. So hopefully this works and I don't need the, the bellows, but it should also be really close to making some bellows to raise the temperature. Because all it needs is a bit of lumber and some leather. So we do have in the mob drops chest, I think, what was it? Mob drops, three medium raw height. And as far as I know, this could give us six leather or three. 
Um, so this should be one of the things we can also do soon. Yeah, maybe convert it into leather already. So let's see. Jug got up to yellow white. Ah, that's unfortunately not enough. I think yeah, that's where it evens out. It's not hot enough to turn this into fired clay. Okay, then we actually need the bellows right now. And that's the next thing yeah, we want to focus on. That's something I also always have to look up how to turn the height into ladder. Okay, so what we have a medium raw height. So the first step is to soak this in lime water. Oh, this is already the first issue. So we need another barrel and we need to make lime water. But this requires flux. Let's so just put it in there to make lime water. But flux requires a certain type of stone to be made. Um, but we have marble. Oh, we can also use raw shellfish just to get a little bit. Limestone, dolomite, chalk and marble. I don't think we have this around here, so I mostly got what was that side. Yeah. But we have the ocean nearby, so maybe, yeah, if we maybe try to get some clams, we can get the flux from there for now. Okay, so let's go out a little bit. Made myself a boat that just requires five planks. Okay. As far as I don't know if the water is a little bit deeper, we could find some of those clams at the bottom of the sea. Let's maybe dive in, see if we can see something. It's mostly seagrass here and a stone. Maybe I need to go further out. Have here. A mussel. I think this might also work. Gotta worry about not drowning. There it is. Okay. Let's check actually. We can make out of the muscle. Oh, okay. Seems like this one isn't useful. Okay, then we gotta keep searching. Maybe we'll just move a bit further out. So the clams should be easy to spot. They're really wide. There is one. Oh, you probably need a special tool for this. Could have checked with the the whaler on top. No, let's just keep looking. Oh, that's actually interesting, this giant squid. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Can get some squid ink from that. Uh, what's my best weapon right now? I don't even know. Should maybe get some air first. We can quickly check the stats. Chisel. Looks like the pickaxe might be good for this. Okay, so I actually wanted some dye earlier to dye one of those vessels. Oh, I actually get attacked by, <laughs> by the ink. Yeah. To dye one of those vessels so you can see it in the sea of vessels uh, a bit better. There's even a glow squid down there. And there's dynamic light. <laughs> should probably also get that. So basically a vessel we have my food in. It should stand out from the others. That would be kind of nice. Just trying to kill that squid here. Get the... Uh, Black die from it. Is this a different one? Yeah, the health is lower. She has 46 hearts, it's crazy. I think the larger they are, the more health. There we go, got it. Oh. There's even the glow squid. Did I pick it up? Yeah, got four insects. It's even a glow squid. Huge! 80 health! <laughs> and I broke the pickaxe, oh my god. I wanted to make a new one anyway. Almost drowning. Then still take damage on the other tools. <laughs> Let's try the saw. That's actually brutal. Being a squid with a saw. So also take a while. Okay, let's get back up. 
I went to the cave, he knows. <laughs> he wants to drown me. So here we go again. Oh, it's that far back. Can only get like two or three hits in now. And I really need to go back to not drown. Come on. That's gonna be close. Yeah, it always <laughs> so reduces the health by a hundred. So I should really time my attacks. Okay, let's go again. So I get five. I can already need to go back. Oh my god, this is gonna take a while. There's a smaller squid. Yeah, made it out. <laughs> smaller squid, maybe let's focus on that. Maybe the, the big glow squid was closer. It's also great for the, for the tool durability, of course, to misuse it. It's an attack weapon. <laughs> Hopefully the saw survives at least. I think it's also vanilla thing. If you actually use the, the tools for the wrong purpose, it uses up two durability instead of only one. Okay, let's get up here. Let's see if we can take down a glow squid. I guess the glow squid ink would actually be nice to upgrade the science a little bit. Okay, back up. That's gonna be a long fight. Okay, I think I could take it down now. No. Where am I? <laughs> oh no! I think the squid just got me. Can I get out of this? Oh, this is getting so close. <laughs> the squid has five health left. Okay, but this time. One more hit. Here we go. Can't see the squid ink. I'm not sure if I picked it up. Might need to get it later. Oh my god. Come swim, swim, swim. Oh. That's actually a close one. Let's see. Did I pick it up? No, we need to get back down there and try to find the, the glow squid ink. Of course, I really want to get it now. Oof. Okay, almost at 100 health. So I can at least take a little bit of damage. See where's the glow squid ink item? Oh my god, I can't see it. No! Maybe F3 and B could be helpful for this. To spot entities a bit better. Show the hitboxes. Item, entity. There, yeah, okay. Because a little bit cheaty. But I really want to get it. <laughs> okay. Come on! I made it! Awesome, now we can upgrade the science. Oh, this was a hard battle for three close insects. What are they even useful for? Um, insect. Oh, we can make some sort of glow arrow with it. That's interesting. And of course the item frames. And we can put it on science. Okay. So now it's also daytime. It's also good. Maybe it's easy now to spot the clams. Yep, here's one. Let's see what tool requires. Clam. A pickaxe that it just broke fighting with the squid. Okay. <laughs> then we need to go back and make a pickaxe. Okay, so back home. Got the black dye from the ink sack. And then we combine with the unfired vessel. Get the black unfired vessel. You already have to do it before you fire it, of course. Okay, this will stand out a little bit from the others. Then I made another jug and the yeah, tool head molds. Let's place them down again and do the old fashioned uh, fire pit. There we go. And the other four. Oh, already got some stuff in there. Some satch on top again. And 16 locks. Which is so expensive when it comes to the wood. And two torches. Okay. Then I gotta get a drink already again. I guess now we can also upgrade three of the signs. They can pop out a bit better. Yeah. Ores. It's also important. Charcoal. Everything is actually important. Stone bricks. <laughs> okay. So while we heat up the clay, I'm actually gonna go out and collect a couple more sticks. Running low on those. But once we have the scythe, this will no longer be an issue, then we have more than enough sticks. Okay, so check it out, I got the fancy black glazed vessel now. It's definitely gonna stand out from the others. And I'm just gonna put my food and my water in there. 
Okay, but for now it's going to put away the other vessels. Now we need 600 milli buckets of copper. That's going to be one and a half stacks of the normal native copper. Okay, then we can heat up the charcoal forge. Go. Yeah, got a little bit of charcoal left, not a lot. Hopefully it's gonna be enough to heat up all of that. Okay, I think I'm just gonna do it four at a time. Can I actually put multiple over here? I think I can. Then we can also do the full five of them. Okay. So it's gonna melt soon, or it says can weld danger. There we go, it fills it up immediately. All right, yeah, this should definitely be enough charcoal to heat up everything. Can take this one out already. But it definitely takes a while, like a minute or so to heat it up. Okay, there we go, proper tools for everything. Take them out of the mold. And now we can combine them with a hammer, new pickaxe, an axe. This is gonna be used up really quick. Should have maybe made more of those even. Scythe and a shovel. Okay, pretty sweet. Oh, forgot the javelin. <laughs> That's also nice. Not even sure. I think this can actually one-shot kill a fish if we hit him. So in case we run out of food, it's probably a good weapon to have around. Okay, so as you can also see, this yeah fills up the inventory quite well. Usually I'd like to have all the tools around with me. So we should definitely look into getting a toolbox as soon as possible. It requires gold, we can check it out from create mode. So toolbox that needs a gold sheet. Uh, cocks, we can yeah make those out of the... Um, Raw stone we got, and the chisel, then chest we can make, and we need leather for this as well. Rabbit hide, actually I've not seen that yet, but yeah, we wanted to make some leather anyway. Hopefully we got enough for the, the bellows plus the toolbox, and we also need some leather for a saddle if we actually find a horse. Alright, so good progress in this episode. Yeah, next episode we can... Go out to the ocean again, try to get some flux so we can make the ladder for the bellows. Because that would mean we would no longer need to fire our pottery yeah, in those holes there. We could just do it in the charcoal forge instead. Alright, hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks guys for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye!